those don't know, we spend a lot of time in the uh, Dodge market too. You know, we just picked up the shop Hellcat. But one of the things the Hellcat guys, because the Hellcats even come with the chiller from the factory. It's one thing you don't see a lot of Mustang guys with, but we have a lot of experience with them. So the guys that buy inner chillers, they shipped us over one of their stage two kits for the uh, 15 and up Mustang, and we threw it on our uh, our shop car here. Take a look at this. You put your hands on there. I wish we had a temperature gauge to read that, but look at that blower. This has been idling about five minutes. That just gives you an idea of how cool this intake charge is. So we're going to go out, we're going to drive it around, we're going to go wide open throttle, and we're going to kind of show you how this inner chiller works. Guys, one of the other cool things, so this is our 2024 Mustang, but we're using this Avid device just to check things. So I've had an exhaust code, but the cool thing about this, you go diagnostics, codes. So when you look at this, this is set up, it doesn't just give you a code. Look at the detailed information. Exhaust flow control valve B, control performance. Uh, DT's confirmed this test failed since the last started. But it just gives you more detailed information on what that code is. Basically, we've got a factory exhaust valve that's flapping around a little bit, uh, and that's what's setting the code. But look at that detailed information you get in Avid. You don't get that with any other device. But we're going to go ahead and clear the DTC just to get it out of there. No codes, ready to go. And then we can go back to the home screen just by hitting the Avid button. And now, when you look at your gauges, Again, we're going to check out this uh, FI interchiller setup. Like I said, we're on a. Uh, we're going to do a. Let's do a six pack. Do a setup. All right. We got IET. Look at this. So now we've got the IETs, which again, that's in Celsius. So let's. Uh, we're going to edit the gauge, like we talked about, and click on unit. We're going to go to Fahrenheit. Finish. So now IET is going to be in degrees Fahrenheit. Look at our IET too. Got some transmission line pressure, engine coolant temps, the spark that we're seeing, the gear. Uh, engine coolant temp I really don't need, so let's uh, let's look for something different here. Change. All right, so if we want to see like the spark that the car is seeing, the timing while we're out there running around. And again, it tells you the different things, you know, whatever's in yellow, that's what you're seeing, so gear. Uh, spark, this is gear, spark, so let's do spark advance, we're going to select that, finish, so now we can see what kind of spark we're seeing, but we had that in a different spot, so let's go ahead and find line pressure trans, which we really aren't going to need either, but let's uh, edit the gauge here, change, sorry, see load like we want to see the fuel, fuel trims short-term fuel trims and again it gives you a little pre what we're seeing here select finish so we got spark short-term fuel trims IETs IT2 uh, this is the gear that we're in which we may leave gear we've got the RPM there don't really need line pressure so let's let's see if there's one other thing that we can uh, put in there we want parameter the change Long-term fuel trims, load. That load will give us kind of a, if we want to see knock, if it's getting some knock, we'll throw that in there. Finish. So we got spark, short-term fuel trims, what gear we're in, um, and then we got the knock down there, IT2 and the ITs. So that'll give us a pretty good uh, setup on the data logging. And again, when we go out to drive this around in data log, and if you notice, the ITs are getting a little cooler there that inner chiller you just tap start recording it's recording data tap the screen again stop recording super easy to use so i'm gonna get this stuck up on the windshield we're going to go check out this uh, fi inner chiller all right so we're getting ready to go out and drive around we're waiting for the temperature to dress i think it's about 80 degrees today 82 degrees out so it's a little humid as well uh, it says 71 here, but the car's been sitting in the garage, so that's going to go up. But right now, our IETs are 106, but look at our IET, too. Only at 70 degrees. Now, we're going to go out and drive this around. We're going to do some wide-open throttle. We're going to really show you how this inner chiller works. And again, we're data logging using the new Avid device, uh, just the next generation of uh, tuning devices. Just so awesome compared to anything out there. You're going to see a lot of videos of that coming over the next couple of weeks, but we'll check out these uh, IETs, too. So, been idling a little bit as you can see right away 
109, we were at 73. As soon as we start moving, look at these IET2s. Start dropping, driving around. You're getting some coolant, but you're gonna watch these IETs. But watch as we go wide open throttle. And to give you an idea, we did some data logging over the weekend. We were at the NMRA race in um, Norwalk, Ohio over the weekend. We actually made some quarter mile pulls and we were, we were going through, and I'll, I'll get some of those logs out just to show you guys. We were going through, we, we were driving, it was, uh, you know, 75 degrees out, uh, 77 degrees out, 2,700 feet of air, and we're driving, and quarter mile down the track, we're seeing IETs, uh, IT2s in the 74 degrees, 72 degrees, just going down the track, full quarter mile passes, actually colder than the ambient air temperatures out there. Look, you see that's starting to go down? 68 degrees, 66 degrees. The more you drive, with this inner chiller, the better the temperatures get. All right, so you see ITs are about 68. See if we get a little straight here. We're gonna give it a little gas. Watch those IT2s, 64, 63, 59, 57, 55. Look at those IT2s. So it's, uh, look at this, 87 degrees out we just had 55 degree IAT2 temperatures. I mean, that's amazing. This FI inner chiller is the bomb. And again, these are available on the website. We've been selling these for a long time. They're just not real popular in the Mustang market, but you know, the guys just aren't real familiar with them. But we, we are because, you know, we spend a lot of time in the Dodge market. And as you look out here, so you can see it's 83 degrees out roughly right now, because we're in the shade, IT about 82 degrees it's matching the outside so the engine bay temp is very similar but again it2 this is this is after the air comes in from outside and is going into the supercharger this is measured this is the this is the air after the supercharger has compressed it 64 degrees 66 degrees we're actually 16 degrees cooler so we're going to try a little wide open blast here and i just want you to keep an eye on how how cool this thing stays Back to 66. It's 
just this FI interchiller is amazing. I can't say enough good things about them. We've been selling more up to the Mustang guys, but the Mustang guys, like I said, just aren't as familiar with this tech. Dodge puts these on the Hellcats, the newer Hellcats from the factory, the Trackhawks. They all have this from the factory. Uh, just an amazing thing that Ford's never really caught up with, but you can get them from us. We've got them 20% off up through the end of the month. It's end of the year in Australia, so anything that's ordered by June 30th, which is June 29th our time, because we got to have the order to them. They're a little bit ahead. We've got to get it to them by the 30th. You're going to get 20% off right now. What we're looking at now is a data log from this past weekend at the NMRA race in Norwalk, Ohio. This was the quickest run we've ever had. This is with a 3.25 pulley. So we've actually pulled down on this, which is going to cause it to generate a little bit more heat than we've previously generated on this thing. So this is a 985 at 143 mile an hour. So if you look, we're starting out here at idle. You can see we're about 77 degrees on our IE2 temperatures. So as we launch, which is about here, the convert, converter kind of flashes, and then you see it kind of catch here. This is about where it catches at and really starts ramping up. But if you look, you see these IET2s. If you look over here, 77 degrees when we start. Now you start going down 75, 73, and about halfway, uh, right as we get into third gear, you'll see these IET2 temps. Look over here. Uh, there is here. Let me come out this way and then you go over. You'll see 64 degrees. So we're as low as 64 degrees. By the end of the run, uh, we're hitting, we're back up to about 72. But again, you got to remember, this is uh, 82 degrees or so out, uh, 2300 or so feet of DA, and we are below the ambient temperature out there. Simply amazing. So what I'm going to do now, I want to pull up a run from the last NMRA race in St. Louis. And this was only with a 3.5 pulley, so it's not going to generate quite as much. So we're going to open this up. Sorry, we're going to get this data log open. Uncheck some things just to make it easier to read. All right, so this is the uh, run there. Now, let's check out the IT2 temperatures. So this run, if you look here, look at this. Starting out 126 degrees on the IA2, IET2 temperatures. Now, was a little warmer there, 102 degrees out, so it was about eight, eight degrees warmer, I think it was a pretty warm weekend, but the reason those temperatures are gonna be warmer too is again, because you didn't have the inner chiller. So we're starting out with the IET2 at about 126 degrees. As we get to the end of the run here, if you click here and then pop out, come over. Let's click in here, come over. 127 degrees, and the, the Whipple winter cooler is pretty inefficient. I mean, you see we only went up five degrees during the run, but look at where you're starting at, 126 degrees because it's so warm out through that run. So as you get through, uh, as you get through the track and you get to the end here, you see this. I mean, you are literally 127 degrees. You're 50, 55 degrees warmer than you are with the FI Inner Chiller. This FI Inner Chiller is basically getting you an extra 50 degrees cooler on your IT2 temperatures. I mean, it's just all it's going to do is produce more power, make the car quicker, take all that out of the equation, especially on the street, because this thing is running all the time. So your temperatures are staying cooler all the time. Make a quarter mile pass, come back, same thing. But again, you're starting out 70 degrees cooler, sometimes, uh, or 50 degrees cooler, sometimes 60 degrees. I mean, the thing that this FI inner chiller does is just is just amazing. And again, we always like to show data, let's see. And you gotta remember again, this was on a 350 pulley. We had a 325 at the Norwalk race, which generates more heat, because the more you spend a blower, the more heat it's gonna generate. So anyway, I just wanna show you some real world data on this FI inner chiller, simply amazing. Uh, we recommend getting one again before the end of the month. While you got that 20% off, hit us up at Beefcake Racing.